Hey everybody, uh, extra video today. Um, I just wanted to show off some really, really sick stuff I'm doing in, in Python in my Python class. Uh, and it's actually not that impressive, but um, I'm just proud of it because it's kind of like I'm solving puzzles, you know? Uh, that's all that it really is. Uh, so basically, in um, my Python class, you go through this thing where it's like, you know, one of them is about like nested loops and one of them is about like, um, uh, 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 break and continue statements in, in, uh, in loops. Um, if we're going through like a loop section, so that's why I mentioned two loop examples. Um, but um, I do want to show off two really cool solutions that I did um, recently. And uh, hmm. okay, so 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 something I did here, you may notice at the top here, uh, up here, there's going to be it says what the name of my window is, and you're going to see ChatGPT pretty regularly. The reason why is because um, a lot of my ah, Okay, you're just gonna have to trust me on this. I did not use ChatGPT on these solutions, and if I was, I wouldn't be showing you guys because it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be as excited about them. Uh, the reason why I'm opening up ChatGPT and then showing you guys code uh, is because something I like to do is, I, I, I kind of consider ChatGPT like sort of a, sort of a, uh, uh, like a all-knowing being, uh, which I know isn't true, it, it can hallucinate and stuff, but whenever I complete a solution for whatever, uh, Python thing I'm doing, um, I always end up asking ChatGPT, what, like when I finish it, I always ask ChatGPT the same question and I see what it does, and it always does something different, and I'm like, oh, this is what, this is what I did, and they're like, uh, it's like, oh, interesting, you know, um, but, uh, you know, so, the, the thing is, is that in, so, uh, I have a lot of my code in code blocks that I send to ChatGPT, so that's why, um, I'm opening up ChatGPT. I also used it for OCR here. Like you can, uh, I feel like this is a little overkill because I could just use some OCR software, but it doesn't do it as well as ChatGPT. Um, but yeah, look, we uh, like I was like, hey, because this is a solution that I'm going to show you guys, and I was like, could you, can you do some OCR for this? And it did. And the only thing it looks like it changed is it just added a, a blank. It just added some white space right here. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to. Uh, unpause it when I sort of have my uh, my solutions like ready and I have the questions ready because I kind of just open this up without uh, thinking about how it would work. So just give me a second. Uh, okay, so hold on, hold on. We've almost got it. That's my current show in the background. Okay, so uh, here's the first thing I did and this was uh, from uh, yesterday and I'm pretty proud of this. Um, Basically, it's this question where it's like, hey, um, make a piece of software where if the input is two and six, it'll have a sort of rows and columns uh, that is that is uh, two rows thick and six columns wide, right? So um, if the input is two and six, it, it, oh yeah, so yeah, in that example, right? Um, so I'm gonna run it. Um, uh, so I'm going to do an output where it's like 10 and like 20, um, and then you have, uh, just 20 columns, uh, no, you have, a uh, hold on, you have 20 rows and, uh, am I being stupid? Hold on. Yeah, so, so you have 20 columns and 10 rows, um, and they're organized by like, you know, it's like A1 and A it's like a spreadsheet, you know, and I, I just find that very cool. Um, and the way I did it was, uh, as you I can increase the size here. There we go. Uh, sure. Um, so I had rows and columns, and then I just had a column equals one and row equals A to initialize it. And then I, this is for the net, this is for nested loops. Um, this is the thing we did for nested loops. This is like the final question uh, as like kind of a test of your knowledge. Um, so I did for, um, and I and N isn't even useful here. It's just so that I can do a for loop. I don't know. I could have maybe done this more efficiently if I used the I and N variables. But uh, anyway, so so I did I in a range num rows because num rows is, so I in range for like 10 or I in range for 20. Um, and then I did print uh, with an S string. And when I was learning Python back in middle school, I never learned about S strings. I kind of just like learned like vaguely how to do loops and like vaguely how to do like inputs um and then i just sort of 
did like the Yandere dev like if else strings and it kind of was terrible. Um, I've hidden all of those repositories on my GitHub because they were very embarrassing. Um, but uh, you know, I'm F strings are so sick and cool. I, I you know I love working with them uh, and I'm putting F strings in everything. They call, they call me F string Fabian. That's what they call me. F F string Samuel. That's what they call me. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so, so then uh, it prints uh, a row and column, and then it just does column equals column plus one. Um, and then inside of here, it does it does uh, print, so it creates a new line, and then it does a uh, row. Like, it, it because it, and then it does, like, row equals, because I needed it to go, like, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So the thing I did was I did ord row plus one, and ord row basically turns it into the, um, sort of ASCII, like, character code for, um, that letter. So if you do, like, ORD, capital A, it's like, I, I can just look, um, uh, ORD, uh, A, 65. So it does, so it gets, uh, 65, and then it, uh, does plus one, and then it turns that back into a character, so it does ORD, like, capital A, that's 65, and then it does, uh, like, CHR, uh, 65, and then it turns it, and then it does plus one, so it's 66, and then it's like, oh, that's B. And so then it's able to go from A to B to C to D. Um, and I just find that very cool. Um, and I, I, you know, I learned about that from earlier. And uh, yeah, so then it does that, and then it goes back to the top of the loop, because that's how it works. Um, and then it just uh, goes through that again, and now the row and column have changed, um, because uh, you started it back again from the beginning. Um, and it just goes through that, and then it goes through that, and it's it's just very cool. It's very cool, and I'm very happy with it. Um, and yeah, so then here's the one I just did just now that inspired me to make this video, and this one was kind of freaky. Uh, the reason why this file name is called a 4 break test, I actually made this file to work with it in Codium because I uh, find this a lot of a better environment than like the stupid, uh, stupid uh, web-based IDE that uh, uh, Zybooks has. Um, Zybux is kind of terrible, um, you know, I, I don't mind, but I just, I just prefer, I just prefer, uh, Codium, and, uh, I should have just learned Vim, like I have, like I have Vim on my computer, you know, <laughs> Vim, I'm cheating too, that was from, uh, the reason why it's called I'm cheating too is because I did that one for cheating, uh, a couple times on Zybux, it asks you, like, oh, what's gonna be the output of this code, and, uh, you know, if I lock in for a while, I could get it, but it, like, I don't, I don't want to deal with that, and that's for, uh, that's for a couple times. I've only done it a couple times, so that's for the couple times in which, uh, I just, I just want to run the code to see what it outputs, because it asks me what it outputs, and, it, you know, I can figure it out, but I, I just don't need, and I know, Py like, you can see, I, I know Python, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, you know, maybe, maybe it's immoral, but, you know, um, so if I do Vim on, a yeah, I can do Vim on time cheating. This is what confused me. I didn't really, I couldn't really get what the uh, the output would be here. Um, but you know, like I know how to, how Vim works. You know, I, I could uh, do like cool little uh, cool little like things. You know, and I you know I could do interesting stuff. I, I know enough, you know, to get away my uh, to know my way around a what a terminal uh, to to know, my, to know my way through a, a server I'm SSHing into, but not enough to like use it for software development. I could get NeoVim and then I can, you know, make it into an IDE, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't care about it enough to, to do that, but I probably should because then, you know, I could just copy my config over to servers I SSH into and then I could have like my own, like, like SSH, like, like IDE through SSH, like in my terminal and that'll be really useful. But, you know, I, I, I do admit it's stupid that I haven't learned Vim. That's a stupid decision. It, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, yeah, so this is my, uh, this is my, uh, up here is the question they asked me. Um, and the funny thing is, is that this was actually, yeah, so the reason why this is called four break test is because, um, this was to showcase what your knowledge was of breaks and continues in loops. Um, and I understand how breaks work, like a break immediately breaks you out of the loop and continue just, uh, brings you to the top of the loop no matter what's under it, you know? Um, so you could do like a, like a, if statement inside of a for loop and if it's like a certain condition uh you can continue which will bring it to the top and then it might do something that'll make it go past the if statement uh if that's not the case if like something's changed um and they're really cool and this was the final thing and so i think you were supposed to use uh break statements here and actually when i asked chat gp uh, to do the solution uh to this afterwards 
Yeah, so this is an example of what I'm talking about. Like here, I'm like, oh, uh, you know, answer, do this in Python, answer this question. And I was like, oh, do it with input, because I forgot to mention you have to do it with input. And it gave me this, and I was like, cool, this was my solution, you know. Um, but anyway, so, you know, when I asked ChatGPT to do this to see what it did, um, I, I, uh, I, it, it used break statements. So presumably the most efficient way to do this is with break statements, but I did this weird thing with lists, as you can see. Um, so, so the thing I did was basically I, uh, did, you know, I just did all this stuff to initialize this and you had to have this at the top. Like you couldn't edit this, this had to be at the top of your thing. So, um, um, so, so yeah, uh, basically you have Simon pattern and you have user pattern, uh, and then, uh, it creates a, a like two empty lists, which is Simon pattern list and user pattern list. Um, and then it just uh, go, goes through um, Simon pattern, and then it just appends every single letter in uh, the Simon pattern input uh, into a list, and then it just appends uh, every single uh, uh, character in the user pattern input into a list. Um, so then you have Simon pattern list and user pattern list, which is two lists, uh, each entry being um, the what? What each entry being the um, uh, each entry being each character in the input. Um, so then for uh, the sequence in range ten, something funny I noticed is all of the um, inputs that it did to test if my code worked were only ten characters long, and I was like, well, I don't really have to have a uh, an exception for if it's like under or over ten characters because if every test input is going to be ten characters long, I could just have it do a for loop with a with a zero through 10 range. So uh, I just make it run run through this 10 times. And uh, so it does uh, if Simon, Simon pattern through, um, which is like the index in the list of what that character is. Uh, and it's like, hey, if Simon pattern list uh, through, so if like index zero in Simon pattern list is equal to index zero in user pattern list or index one or index two or index three, uh, it does through equals three plus one. So then it goes to the next character in the list. Uh, and then it does, User, uh, uh, user score equals user score plus one. Uh, the reason why I did through and user score instead of just printing through at the end is because you had to have this at the bottom. So, so you just had to, you had to make the user score uh, variable um, in the in the Zybooks thing. Um, and then it just kind of went through this ten times, uh, and then it just worked. So, like for example, um, it's supposed to output user score four uh, if I run this. So uh, if I input this, and then I input uh, uh, this, you'll see that it shows user score four like it's supposed to. And if I also do like, uh, like I don't know, hold on. Oh, can I can I do this? Okay, well, you know, it's, it's very cool. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and yeah, that's just the extra video for today. Uh, goodbye.